Hello everyone. I'm Xu Yuan Shuo, Assistant Professor of Graduate School of Law, Hokkaido University, Japan. Thank you for being with us. Today, I'd like to share some idea about the administrative law and human rights protection. What will happen while we try to protect human rights by applying administrative law in the real world? What can we learn from the gap between law and practice? Today, I will introduce the case of spark check. Spark check means police stop people on the street and ask them to show their ID card or drive license. I think you might hear something like this. Spot check. Please cooperate. What's the human rights issue in the spot check? As you already learned from textbooks, there are many regulations about human rights protection, such as law-based administration and legitimate expectations. The government officers should follow the law and due process. People whose rights have been violated could bring a lawsuit against the state. We regulate the state's power through the regulation and protect human rights from the abuse of power. Also, we have these regulations to protect human rights. There are still human rights violations in the real world. Recently, to control COVID-19, police set checkpoints on the street, stop citizens, and check if they wore masks. People who didn't wear masks will get a ticket. Well, the mask check sounds nothing wrong. Police officers are just doing their duty to control COVID-19. But the story might be different if we consider the police law. Some scholars and human rights organizations indicate the risk of human rights in violation in this case. According to Article 6 of the Police Power Exercise Act, police could make checkpoints only when considered necessary to prevent crimes or deal with events that may affect major public safety or social order. Did not wear a mask is not a crime. How about major public safety or social order? It isn't very sure. Some officers apply the Communicate about Disease Control Act to respond to the criticism. There are three act articles about the police power in this act. Article 38, healthy officers could co collaborate with police to enter public or pu private place if necessary. Article 41, Police should notify the health department if they detect suspect, suspect patient or the remain. Article 45. Police should assist the health officers if the patient refuses the isolation ward. These articles have nothing to do with the mask checks. The citizen's freedom of movement is restricted when police officers stop them. According to the principle of a law-based administration, officers should not restrict citizens' rights without any legal basis. How did the problem happen? Why do police officers do even the legal basis is doubtable? Here comes a gap between the law and the practice. Does the mask check with a doubtful legal basis violate human rights? How can it happen? Let me introduce the most common causes 
of human rights violations, policy, resource, practice, media, and cost. Let's take a look at the mask check case. Based on a law-based administration principle, if citizen asks, why did you stop me? Police officers should show the specific law basis. Officers should reply, I stop you for checking mask, based on which act, which article, and you can express your objection and seek relief. It's an ideal example of spot check on textbooks, yet it usually won't happen in practice. Let's see what practice police officers my concern in the practice. When I ask why, police officers might concern about the policy in the first place. Before police officers carry out a mask check, they both might order them like this to control the COVID-19. The government requests us to check if people wear masks. Please find as many people without a mask as you can. I will give commendation to who wrote the most tickets and punish who wrote the list. The boss might didn't mention anything about a legal basis. Completing the mission might be the top priority. They might not care about a legal basis as much as policy. If you are an officer, you might think like this. My boss I ordered me to do so, and I might get punished if I didn't write enough tickets. Human resource also matters too. According to the law, officers in charge of controlling COVID-19 should be the healthy department. That's a reason why should healthy officers, not police officers, check people's masks. But here comes the problem of human resources. The health department might say, we don't have enough personnel to enforce the mask check. Since the police department has plenty of personnel, they can enforce the mask check. The police department is enforcing spot check regularly. It has enough officers to check citizens' masks on the street. But is it legal? The healthy department might didn't think that much. Next is the practice of obligation. Of course, it's very important to obligate as an officer. The junior police officer learned the practice of policing from senior officers. Sometimes, the police, the practice might conflict with the law. Next, ask for the legal basis of the spot check. Some senior officers might reply, citizens should cooperate with police while spot check. It's nothing to do with the legal basis. This saying is a kind of practice in administration. It's difficult for junior officers to concern or even challenge if the practice with a legal basis or not. Outside the institution, media is also a crucial factor. You might hear something say something from media like this. There are a lot of people who are not wearing masks. It's horrible. The government should do something. The police should do something. The pressure of public opinion might make police officers think, that's true. As a police officer, I should do something. Otherwise, chief officers might be worried about the criticism from mass media or Congress if they didn't enforce a mask check. 
It's how media affect officers' behavior from outside of administration institutions. Last but not least, the citizen might concern about the cost of seeking relief. No matter how the police officers think, citizens have the right to express their objection and seek relief. But it might be pretty costly to ordinary citizens. First, they must know to recognize that while police should not stop citizens without a legal basis. Second, if they express their objection, they might need to stay at a checkpoint or police station for a few hours. Seeking relief costs their time and risks them. Finally, they will need a lawyer to file a lawsuit, which costs both time and money. In practice, citizens might don't know what the problem of mask checks. Even unwilling citizens might still co cooperate with the police due to the high cost of seeking relief. Police know this, of course, so they usually expect citizens will cooperate with them. For the above reasons, police officers might not consider law-based administration as a top priority. While questioned by the citizens, instead of explaining legal basis, they just reply, cooperate with police, police. Is the mask check legally doubtful? Yes, but it is the practice. That's why we can protect human rights only by administrative law in practice. However, I'm not mean that the administrative law is useless. Through the mask check case, I'd like to show that law in practice is always affected by many factors, such as policy, resources, media, and citizens' consciousness. This fact caused the gap between law and practice. Next time you face a human rights issue. You should first figure out where the problem is. Should we fix the law or fill the gap between law and practice? To achieve human rights protections, we should concern about legal, political, social, and economic factors. All facts matter. That's why you need to learn law, politics, sociality, and economy in this subject. After this lesson, we should not only ask if it's legal or illegal. We should ask how and why it's illegal or illegal with knowledge inside and outside law. Only in this way, we can find out the human rights protection proposal, which is effective in practice, in real world. Let's take the human rights more seriously. Thank you very much.